Today, we often see Apple's dominance in the market, not just by counting those who use iPhones, but also those with AirPods lodged in their ears. But despite in-ear buds being in vogue over the last five years, there's one company you may not have heard about who were actually on course to beat Apple to launch their own in-ear technology. That company is Doppler Labs, and the reason you haven't heard about them is because they went bust. But what's the story behind the fall of Doppler Labs? Doppler Labs was founded by Noah Kraft, an energetic salesman with a movie business background, and Fritz Landman. Kraft was frustrated by the movie business, having to hand control to a studio who might muck around with it for years. After working with a friend's music tour, he was surprised to find that music sounded so different if they played in a bar compared to a different venue. He asked himself, what if we could curate how we hear the world? Kraft convinced Landman to get involved at a time when everyone was focused on the eyes with Google Glass, and together they built a team, hiring many of their staff from companies like Dolby, Dropbox, Sony, and Palantir. Doppler's first product launch came in 2014 with their dub acoustic filters, which were stylish earplugs marketed as helping to make music sound better but quieter for the steep price of $25, but helped to get people talking about in-ear technology. Following this, Doppler wanted to put a computer speaker and mic in everyone's ear with their product Hear One, which were priced at about $300 and were what you'd expect. They could stream music and make calls, but they'd also remix audio in many different ways, blocking out outside noises and filtering sound to improve its quality. They wanted to be the first company to make the best earbuds in the market and were ahead of Apple's AirPods, whilst also targeting the ear health market to make hearing aids cool. They raised $50 million in funding from the likes of Mark Ronson and David Geffen, among others, but instead of introducing the Hear One straight to market, they started a Kickstarter campaign in June 2015, which raised $635,000, almost $400,000 more than they'd originally targeted. The earphone was more advanced than its competitors too, with near-field magnetic induction technology rather than regular Bluetooth to avoid latency issues and improve battery efficiency. Or that was the plan. The young and up-and-coming business seemed to be running smoothly, but it hit a number of issues which saw the firm fail pretty quickly. First, they had significant manufacturing challenges, having to switch manufacturers to start over with a new partner. This was because the first company couldn't scale with them and couldn't keep up, so they thought switching to another manufacturer with no experience cramming so much tech into a tiny unit was a good idea. Then came the crippling battery life. The $300 earbuds could only muster two hours of charge when listening to music, compared to Apple's promise of five hours for the AirPods. Now you mention it, AirPods were another thing. Their popularity and functionality combined to all but kill off the competition. Doppler Labs quickly realized that unless they found another $10 million, it was going to be tricky to keep the business afloat, and even more so when the company had only sold 25,000 units compared to their goal of 100,000 when they officially closed their doors. The company had raised $50 million without actually proving any sales success, and with employees, offices, and investor pressure, life all of a sudden becomes more difficult. Ultimately, Doppler Labs tried to play with the Apples, Amazons, and Googles of this world with a shoestring budget, and not beating AirPods to launch was another nail in the coffin. Despite a late pivot into the hearing health market in 2017, it wasn't enough to save the business. Noah Kraft still held his head high though, suggesting in the final week that if anyone had been hiding a billionaire relative with cash to burn, now would be a good time to introduce them. And on reflection, believes that we f***ing started a hardware business, there's nothing else to talk about, we shouldn't have done that. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.